Hi everybody, welcome to today's, uh, to today's session of Ask Octopus where we'll be answering uh, some of your interesting questions. Uh, today I have Ryan Russell and Bob Walker on the call. Hello. Hello. And what I'm going to be doing is, um, one of the questions I get answered the most, um, and I'm sure you guys are the same, is um, how do I upgrade Octopus? It's, um, it's surprisingly good, and the thing is, is there's lots of ways to do it, but I want to just take today and just go through uh, um, a live, actually a live upgrade of it. Um, it's really straightforward. Um, if I'm being honest, um, the process is really tight. Um, it's it generally, one of the things I would say is, is obviously, you, there's a few different uh, things, there's a few ways to approach it. And I think, Bob, your, your approach, uh, I think your favorite approach is to clone the VM um, and get over and do a, a POC upgrade. Uh, it depends on what you're doing for that. So like if you're upgrading it from say version three to the latest LTS release, I think that's probably the most prudent way to do, do it because you can then test it. It's very much a, it, you, you're trying to reduce the risk. But if you're just upgrading like from 2018.4.1 to 2018.4.3, then it, I, I think an in-place upgrade would probably be the best way to do, go about doing it. Yeah. Uh, that's the thing. Is it's I'm happy to say you know you guys are similar to me. You've been using Octus for a long time. Um, generally, I always go for an in-place upgrade. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but that you know exactly like you say, Bob. It's I think we are that um, that is when you're making that major jump. Uh, and we are going to be mainly talking about um, you know minor upgrades today. Um, but yeah, it, today what I'm going to do is take you through uh, jumping from the previous version of the LTS over to the new version. Um, so let's just jump in. The first thing I do uh, with this is um, I jump on and do uh, computer release notes. The biggest thing that I do is, is just search for breaking changes. Um, so in this instance, I'll go to our website, go to downloads, what's new in 2000, uh, the most recent version. Handily, this is pre-populated. And really, as you can see, there's lots of changes. We've, you know, there's hundreds of releases each year. So what I tend to do here is just do a quick search. Um, oh, apologies. This is um, it's because I'm using a an <laughs> explorer. Yeah. <laughs> not quite as uh, so. Um, a big thing here is really just breaking changes. And if if you are worried about breaking changes, that's suddenly um, you know, that's when you start thinking about an alternative way to do it. Mm. Um, yep. But yeah, this is a really handy resource. It's just so easy to use. I've done this a bunch of times, and it's um, it is really handy. Okay, so this is it. Um, got up here, as you can see, we're on version 2018, 10.6. So, first thing to do, the second thing to do, and the third thing to do is back up your master key. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's it's like, you know, I've, I've, I've you know, done it before where I've saved the master key um, after I've snapshotted a VM, um, and then obviously, it's like, thankfully it worked out. <laughs> but yeah, that might have got me in a little bit of uh, trouble, but thankfully it was backed up as well. But that's the biggest thing here is make sure you've got your master key. And one of the, um, what we do here is you just select view master key and then either copy to clipboard and save it in a, a third location or even just save it as a text file on your desktop. Okay. You probably so, want to put that master key somewhere besides on, a, on the VM itself, maybe. Yeah. Bit. Okay. That's it. You want yeah, some uh, some secret management. Um, definitely, obviously, from that side of things. So, what? So from here, um, Bob. Obviously, you showed last week uh, some of the maintenance mode and mm -hmm. um, and, and and the node drain. So in here, you've got maintenance. Um, straight away, I would just make sure that you're enabling uh, maintenance mode. Nodes, if you do want to find out about this, uh, Bob did, did a really great video on this. And then, as you can see, nothing is running. I'm just going to make sure that the nodes are drained as well. And that's it. You're good to go. I normally close this off. I have, um, I have uh, downloaded this. And this is a, uh, an in-place upgrade. One of the things here as well is just before you do proceed is normally I make sure that you snapshot your VM um, so you've got something to roll back to. If you're looking for something a bit more robust, then make sure that you've got, say for instance, a full backup server, you know, other backup technologies. 
and ensure that you've got a SQL backup in place as well. Uh, what you want to do is make sure that you've always got that uh, the ability to roll back. Yeah. The nice thing about putting it into that maintenance mode and the drain task cap mode is that you reduce the risk of someone doing a deployment and making your backups invalid at that particular point. Well, that's it. That's it. Because that's the thing is, is it does, it, and this is the thing that I've saw in the past, is you do find that sometimes people uh, will do that. Um, and you need to, because, you know, it's like with databases, it's always that, you know, when do you take the backup? That Well, maintenance really helps you. Um, so that you're not running and then you, you've got that uh, missing data and then really at that point what's more important is you know do you have to continue roll forward or do you need that data so there's obviously some issues yeah yeah the maintenance mode also helps that it keeps someone from deploying while you're running the upgrade which could potentially be bad yeah yes yeah we have been there um so this is it. This is a, it's, you know, we could probably just sit and have a chat whilst this is going ahead, you know, have a coffee. Um, obviously, make sure you're, you're, you've got your change control in place, if you know if that's a thing. Yep. Um, but yeah, this is it. It's really straightforward. I've, I've always loved how easy this is. Um, generally, I've, I've always had a, I've been thankful enough in the past to always have a really good upgrade experience. Have you guys ever run into any issues? I didn't, I did the first few upgrades for Octopus when I was using it, uh, but then I had, uh, I wasn't on the ops team, so the ops team handled upgrades after that, and they were scheduled to run on the weekend, they took about as long as this demonstration's taking, I don't think we ever ran into an issue, but that's not an excuse to not do your backups. Absolutely. <laughs> and test your process. I think what the what we did is where I was working. We we did it once a quarter, unless there was a new feature or a bug fix that you know was very important that we want to apply. And actually, we just did it over lunch because uh, all the developers were located in the same building. So uh, they just said, "Okay, at twelve fifteen, we're going to be upgrading Octopus Deploy and put it in a maintenance mode." You could see it, and I like that banner right at the top. It shows you the maintenance mode is happening. It's like, "Oh, okay, I just won't do any deployments. Call it good." Uh, but yeah, it was it, overall. It was always pretty pretty smooth. But again, our operations team kind of handled the, all the backups and everything like that for us. I didn't really have to think about it too much. And this is that. To be honest, that's a good thing. Um, generally, it's pretty straightforward. And it, you cannot obviously. You've uh, done um, some talks uh, or some presentations about this in the past when you've done some uh, automation. You you know you upgrade because you've got we do installs and upgrades. You know I'm doing that probably. For five to ten times a week um yeah. you know obviously so there's ways to approach this as well um you know, automate it and that's you obviously make sure that you come into maintenance disable this um and then come into your nodes and then just uh, disable node drain and that's you you may want to do some additional checks around there and uh, just make sure things are are, are working uh, nicely but all in all that's that's how easy an upgrade is. And just to make sure you can see, uh, we're running 2019 version 3.1 LTS, and we now have spaces. Nice. Yeah, I, would, I would say that, yeah, if it, for the most part, like the outage window itself for the Octopus upgrade should hopefully be pretty small. I mean, we're talking minutes, like as long as this demonstration's taking, not not hours. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and and specifically for these minor upgrades. Now, I, I think this is a little bit more than a minor upgrade because even though it is going from one LTS to another, we did go to pre-spaces to post-spaces Octopus. Uh, so that's a little bit more. There were definitely some breaking changes and some changes to the permission structure. But if you're going within minor versions, uh, pretty simple. But if, you, if you're upgrading from like version two or version three to the latest, then it will be a, a little more involved. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I think version two is only uh, 2.65 is only supported up to the 2018 uh, 10.6 as well. Uh, so after that, you would have to do an import export or just do um, multiple upgrades. But that's definitely one that you want to be looking at cloning um, and, and doing testing and doing additional testing on deployment targets. There's, you know, there's a lot, that's a huge upgrade. Um, but yeah, that takes, that's the, the, the end of uh, today's session. And our uh, license, so, oh. as I was just thinking, I, I, sorry, uh -huh. I didn't interrupt, uh, but our, our licensing also allows you, like even if you have, uh, if you have standard edition licensing, you can have up to three Octopus deploy instances running. So what we typically recommend then is uh, like a, a developer or a testing or a sandbox instance, 
that has a couple of scenarios that are more common to your types of deployments that you can upgrade that and test that and then also test any any custom API scripts or anything that you run against that that just as a making sure that you don't run into any breaking changes yeah I've actually had people um, run it on laptops in the past uh, mm -hmm. just to, to you know to do that so that's also an approach as well so yeah um, but you definitely use that and um, we often see it in dev testing and production or Mm -hmm. test uh, prod and and one of the benefits actually I know this is a lot of off topic but you can also have it in DR um, as long as you're not obviously with the SQL uh, bit side of things but yeah nice excellent so uh, thanks for uh, attending today's session um, if you get any interesting questions submit it um, using the, the as you can see the, the link here uh, emails at support and join us at slack thanks Bob and Ryan for joining us today yeah, thank you. Thank you.